Here we are at the assembly and quality assessment stage. So far, we have followed a single sample for five days, from raw DNA to Sanger fragments to detection in the capillary sequencer. If you think about what we did to gather this information, you will recognize that there are enormous gaps in the data we've collected from the single DNA strand. Let's take another look. We started out with a strand of DNA that was about 150 to 200 kilobases long. We broke that into three kilobase pieces. In that process, there were some pieces that were too long or too short, so we lost some genetic information there. We inserted the three kilobase pieces into plasmids. Inevitably, some of the pieces were not accepted into a plasmid, so we lost a little information there. Then we inserted the plasmid into bacteria. Again, not every plasmid entered a bacterium, and we lose a little information. Finally, if you remember when we were shearing the original DNA strand, I said that current technology allows us to read about 700 bases at a time. Well, if we have a segment that we want to read, which is 3,000 base pairs long, and we read 700 bases from either end, that means that we only read about 1,400 bases of 3,000 base pairs, or roughly half of the target DNA. In the end, we extract less than half of the sequence from the original sample. On top of that, not all the data is 100% accurate. Each nucleotide has a varying degree of probability that it is correct, depending on the strength of the signal in the detector. Besides all the missing data, there is the problem of each segment being out of order. We have the front and back end of thousands of pieces of DNA in a totally random order. By itself, this information is useless. In order to construct a complete genome, we need to take many more samples of the same genome from different cells and create a library. As we sequence progressively more samples, we can start to assemble the genome by finding overlapping portions of the sequence among different segment sequences. Computer programs look for matching sequences of nucleotides and attempt to match them together. This process generally yields the majority of the genome. The advantage of this method is that we are able to sequence the vast majority of the genome relatively quickly and accurately. The disadvantage is that there are always exceptions and quirks in biology that leave gaps and create uncertainties. In the meantime, researchers are able to use the data from the known regions to develop new technologies, cure diseases, and understand the genes that make life possible. Here at the JGI, we are always looking to evaluate and incorporate new technologies. Let's take a look at the next generation of sequencers. This instrument is a genome sequencer flex system from Roche 454 Life Sciences. We have currently evaluated and are incorporating it into our production line. This instrument uses a process called pyrosequencing. Pyrosequencing is a method of DNA sequencing based on the sequencing by synthesis principle, and the method utilizes a chemical light-producing enzymatic reaction for detection. The name comes from the pyrophosphate molecule that is released whenever a nucleotide is incorporated into a DNA strand. The pyrophosphate molecule is then reacted with a series of molecules to create a visible light that is then detected by a CCD sensor. This method of sequencing by synthesis eliminates the need for cloning and picking bacterial colonies. This method can simultaneously sequence 1.6 million samples at a time on a single plate. This eliminates the need to use bacteria and plasmids to sort and amplify the samples and greatly reduces the sequencing process time. Genomics will play a larger role in bioenergy, environmental studies, and preventative medicine in the future. We are happy to have been able to give you a glimpse into what goes on at a sequencing center and hope that the data we generate for you will lead you to new and exciting discoveries.